Hey guys, Dr. Kilfoyle here with Podiatry Explained. Today we have an interesting video. We have a patient with a diabetic wound on the bottom of his foot that just won't heal. So what we're doing is we're doing something called a wild osteotomy. We can see the metatarsal bone. This is a close representation of it. We want to make a cut on the metatarsal neck. Typically this can be done wide open where you slash on top of the metatarsal phalangeal joint right above the joint right here. And that's when you make that cut. And typically you wanna make the cut like this and you slide back the head so that it doesn't put pressure on that same area anymore. Here we're doing a minimally invasive uh, variant of this particular surgery where we are just making a poke incision and then we cut that bone with a burr. And you'll see here, we're going to take the dressing off. We you know, prep the patient in the operating room. We use a live x-ray to make the cut uh, we apply a special graft on the plantar aspect of the foot at the wound. We use keresis, which is a fish-based graft. Uh, it's made from cod, and they remove all the cells from it, so it's just straight collagen. And the collagen acts as a scaffolding for the body to make its own cells and push them into there. Uh, this is different from a porcine graft or a cow graft, where because those are mammals, there's a bigger chance for some interspecies disease transmission. Didn't think I was gonna say that today. Um, so here's the graft, we put it on there. Well, first we, we cut some little tiny pieces up, put them into the wound, and then we apply it on top and we staple that down. We put a piece of adaptic on top. Adaptic is like a petroleum laced uh, gauze, and then we wrap it up. Overall, it was about 10, 15 minutes, and this guy's gonna heal great, I guarantee it. And so here we are taking off the wound and you see what this wound has been looking like for the last year or so. It took me a while to convince our friend here that this was necessary, um, but these wounds are very common and it just takes one day for the wound to get infected with some gnarly bacteria and bam, you have gangrene of that second toe and now you can only count to 19. Here we're using um, little pieces of the, of the keresis. We're just putting them in there and we're eventually smack the uh, graft on top. Here we are stapling the graft on top uh, those staples are easily removed in the office. We don't need to take anybody back to the operating room to remove these staples, or sometimes a pin is used for the while. I chose not to use the pin. Well, sometimes it gets scrunched up as you start doing it. So you do north, seat, north, south, east, west, and just so that it stays in its shape. Now the Keris's graft is really good compared to some of these other skin substitute grafts in that it's very tough. It is extremely durable, and so it doesn't get you know torn up from being on the bottom of somebody's foot. Uh, so here is the x-ray. After the graft has been put on, you can see the staples in the x-ray and you can see the wild osteotomy that was made across. So I pull on that toe so that you can see the separation between the metatarsal head and the metatarsal neck, knowing that we have made a complete osteotomy. You also see that it looks like that graft is placed a little distal to where that metatarsal head is. But I guarantee uh, when the patient is weight bearing and that x-ray, you know, everything is you know, properly aligned, that graft is right where that metatarsal head is on weight bearing. Guys, thanks for watching. This is Roger Kilfo with Podiatry Explained.